Please note, for maximum picture quality, it may be necessary to adjust the tracking control on your VCR. I'm having a good time. Not. <laughs> I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Hey now. What is going on, guys? I have my good friend Brad here with me from the <laughs> Artistic Avenger. Me and Brad have been friends for got to be close to 20 years now. We met through skateboarding and through our place of work at the time. And now he's off in Seattle living with his wife, doing his little drawing thing on his YouTube channel, The Artistic Avenger. So Brad, welcome to the show. Please introduce yourself. Well, thanks for having me on here. Uh, I hope I don't bum out uh, your following of horror fanatics over here with my uh, nerdism and, you know, my... Uh, marvel comic book um esque comments and or my lack of knowledge in the in the horror department so no way man um, it'll make it more fun because having <laughs> you to talk and get through this bracket thing will be fun because you're like more of the everyday viewer whereas like me i kind of take it to like a level of almost like obsession so it'll be good to have your voice to see who moves forward and rather than just me who is just obsessed with these things yeah so what do you do on your channel for anyone who's noticed? Also, I have his little information down here. Let me take this off for a second. Right here we have follow Brad. He is at the Artistic Avenger on YouTube. And I also have all the links to his Instagram, his YouTube channel and all that down below. So be sure to follow him. And if you haven't followed us yet, what the fuck are you doing? Follow us as well. Smash that subscribe button. Yeah, do that too. All that. Um, yeah, my channel, you know, I uh, specialize in drawing and, you know, providing tips and tricks on how to follow uh, art books. Right now I have um, How to Draw the Marvel Way, uh, part one, where I, you know, kind of just go through the book a little bit, what it offers, and then, you know, recommend, um, you know, some exercises to implement into the teachings on, on the book. Um, art books can be fairly you know difficult to follow and sometimes it's overwhelming and i want to help you know make it a little bit easier to learn and a little bit more digestible and then you can follow me on tiktok where i do oh, more character design breakdowns where i'll have a you know a, a sped up um a, a speed drawing of a character and i'll talk about all the facts of you know what makes that character unique and how the the suit um, or whatever the the gear might be that they need. And then uh, on Instagram, you know, kind of just speed drawings and random photos of my artwork. Nice. So, yeah. nice. If you're into all that, smash the smash subscribe, the subscribe button. Button. at the Artistic Avenger. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, all those links are down below. Don't mind me. I'm just posting this up. So that way, if anyone wants to join in now, you can click the link on my Instagram story or whatever. All right. So let's get to it. So here we have it. So today it's going to be really fun. I've been really figuring out how to use this platform. Thank you, StreamYard. It's pretty sick. So today we're going to be doing a March Madness. Brought to you so, by StreamYard. Yeah, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> um, so March Madness, as you know, is just like a giant bracket. And it's like a bunch of basketball teams around this time of year, college basketball. And the teams play each other. And, you know, as you win, you move further and further down the bracket. So instead of basketball teams, we're obviously going to have horror icons. And the only stipulation I really had when coming up with the list of people we're going to have is I wanted it to be more well-known characters or characters who've had like a lot of sequels, a lot of coverage. So you're not going to see like just random one-off characters. Like you're not going to get like Pearl in here or anything like that from the X movies or, you know, stuff like that. So we have 
Jason Voorhees. We have the Predator. We have the Tall Man from Phantasm. We have Pumpkinhead, Michael Myers, the Creeper from Jeepers Creepers. We won't get into uh, the monster that directed it, but just the creature from the movies. Uh, we got the Xenomorph from Alien. We've got Freddy Krueger. We've got Pinhead, one of the Cenobites from Hellraiser. I guess we could have really used any of the Cenobites, but everyone knows Pinhead. And we got Leprechaun. We've got Ghostface from the Scream movies. We've got Pennywise from the It miniseries. Or, you know, interchangeable with the Bill Skarsgård It as well. Then we've got Candyman. Then we've got Leatherface. Then we've got Chucky from Child's Play. And our only hero on the list is uh, Ash from The Evil Dead. <laughs> well, we'll see how he fares in this. So, <clears throat> all right. So, yeah, you see all that there. Let me take this down here. Da, da, da. And how I came up with the bracket is actually really easy. Let me just pull it up so you guys can all see it. <laughs> it's okay. actually really easy. It just came from my head. And yeah, it just came from my head. Okay, so here's the bracket here. And how I picked the matches is was really easy. You know, I kind of just took everyone we were going to be talking about and cut out a piece of paper with their name on it, folded it in half, threw it down in a bowl, and just picked one by one. And it would be, you know, I picked out Jason first, and then second I picked out Leprechaun, which is why they will be the first matchup. It was the only way to keep it fair. And uh, when we're doing this, I'm going to do my best to kind of leave my fandom of the series or movies as a whole uh, at bay and just kind of really get down to the nitty gritty of like who would actually win in a, you know, fight or battle between the two. So street fight. Yeah, a street fight. Hence all the fucking Mortal Kombat stuff, too, because deep down it would be like picture yourself, you know, you got. Jason, and then you got Leprechaun over here. You know, who's going to win that fight? But anyway, without further ado, let us start getting to it. Move from the stage. Bear with me, guys, as I am always learning how this shit works. Okay, so up first. Dun, 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 dun. Fight. There you have it. The first matchup, Jason Voorhees versus the Leopard. Lucky Charms. <laughs> so also before we get started, I'm going to share some of Brad's drawings just because he is my guest and I want to be able to show some of the stuff he does. Like he just did these doodles like quick and easy and they all came out really good. So here's his little doodle of Jason Voorhees. Very sick. And then <clears throat> he also has, we got the good old boy, the lep, the lep in the hood down to do no good. <laughs> <laughs> what a matchup to start it off. I laughed when I pulled the names out and I was like, all right, Jason Voorhees, one of my favorite characters, you know, me and Brad are both Jersey boys deep down. So you got to mm -hmm. kind of have a little bit of an affinity for Jason. Oh, let's see. Where is he? Da, 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 da. All right. Let me pull this back up. Okay. So, Brad, let's hear your thoughts first. I'd love to hear them. So, first off, a uh, <laughs> little fun story. Leprechaun was actually the first... Uh, movie horror movie that actually gave me nightmares. Oh, remember, the Leprechaun. Yeah, the Leprechaun. Were you scared he was gonna shine your fucking shoes? Come on. <laughs> I, I it was um I vaguely remember it was the the scene with the box cutter and he's slashing the the fat the oh dude fat yes fat that's fat. a or it was the shoe buckle like whatever it was I yeah yeah it was no like, dude that's kind of scary. <laughs> And I remember just waking up, What's like, up being like, my stomach's going to get cut. Oh. <laughs> dude, that, yeah, that's actually pretty terrifying. I also, uh, what was it? He like bites the dude from, or scratches Jennifer Aniston's leg from underneath the car. Yeah. That was pretty fucking gnarly. Uh, but yeah. I, I don't know. I get it. 
uh, but he always has been like almost too comical. I never really found him too too oh, scary. Yeah, he's a freaking he's a freaking leprechaun. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I do say though, like the original, um, in the original movie, I loved that he he was almost like thwarted by like they throw a bunch of like dirty shoes onto the ground and like he gets so frazzled because he's like a, a cobbler. So he's always running around and he's like polishing the shoes. So that's their way of like getting away. They don't really ever utilize that in any of the sequels, which kind of is unfortunate because I always thought that was really funny. So Jason doesn't even have to uh, bust out the machete and literally just leave his shoes untied. Oh, uh, here we go. Here, here's my buddy Uzi. What does he have to say about it? Leprechaun in a go-kart, pretty fucking scary. I, <laughs> I mean, I'd be scared to be on the road with him, that's for sure. Having that thing chase you down. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, he is going up against Jason. Uh, take your pick of which Jason. I think you could go either any any way. Like I Jason think Jason X. Yeah, Old Jason. I mean, style. how the fuck could Jason X? He's half cyborg. How could he lose to a little leprechaun? I think. Um, I don't know. For all intents and purposes, I would say our Jason's probably going to be like the one from like part six, seven, eight. So he's like already like undead. He's a fucking zombie, kind of hard to kill. But dude, the leprechaun's like three foot nothing. But I, he will be moving a bit slower uh, for future for, for future fights. So. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I mean, dude, it. This is an easy one in my mind. Who who do you think? you want to win this one who jason. do you think would win jason yeah jason. no fucking brainer right okay. unfortunately he sir leprechaun <laughs> he wouldn't even have to to bust out the machete he just throw him halfway around the freaking world it's bad <laughs> <laughs> or kick him punch him at that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i mean it was unfortunate that leprechaun went up against jason in the first round i was kind of hoping it would be like I'd draw like Chucky, so it'd be like Chucky versus Leprechaun, which would be almost like a little bit of more of a fair fight. Yeah. Let me look at this bracket here. All right, let me uh, update our bracket. So sorry if I'm uh, quiet. And if you have the Leprechaun and Chucky, then you just have essentially just two kids fighting each other. No one yeah, <laughs> which is kind of a fair fight, I guess. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so all right. So that, that one was an easy one. That was a, kind of a no-brainer. Let me have a look at who we have coming up next. Okay. Okay. So Jason Voorhees is going to be moving on and don't worry. I will share the updated bracket as we move along. So the next matchup, dun, 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 dun. here we go, boys and girls. Fight. Interesting fucking matchup, dude. Freddy Krueger and Pumpkinhead. <laughs> now let me ask you have you ever seen any of the pumpkin head movies uh i actually have not no okay fair yeah. enough they're kind of a little more obscure we've obviously seen all the freddy shit right yeah your wife is a big horror fan just so the fans know so brad is not completely un unaware of these things she kind of forces him to watch them from time to time specifically michael myers shit <laughs> yeah i mean I, and i enjoyed the horror movies like i've i've watched them you know growing up mm -hmm. uh you know and all that and occasionally you know when i just want to scare myself or you know i'm just feeling like a good slasher yeah um i'll throw those on but yeah uh freddie freddie uh, you know was kind of like oh, okay yeah like it's coming out i'll watch it check this out um, definitely not on like the big rewatch, but yeah, Pumpkinhead, not so much, but I'm kind of curious to, and kind of want to watch more, more of him to learn more about that character. I thought, well, you like like Terminator and aliens, right? Yeah. So you'd be into the original Pumpkinhead because it's Lance Henriksen. Okay. And like the, how that movie plays out is that like these group of kids who are going to a cabin to party uh are riding around dirt bikes near his like fucking uh storefront and his little kid is just like walking around on like these sand dunes and the dirt bike just like comes over the hill and fucking kills his kid so <laughs> um oh what am i looking for here sorry guys um where are they Oh, my bad. So they kill his kid and he there's like this witch that lives in the mountains in his town. Okay. And she's she's kind of like known for like all her like witchcraft type shit. 
and she takes his kid and if you she gives him like this little like i don't know what it what even maybe uzi knows like what would like the sarcophagus be uh of pumpkin he's just like a it's like a little like dead fetus thing that sort of he's like a little fetus thing and the witch gives it to him and she's like go bury him here and then the baby like comes to life and it's essentially just like a creature of vengeance that uh is fed by lance henriksen's want for revenge so he Pumpkinhead goes out unrelentingly to kill all the kids that killed his son okay uh but of course freddy krueger the sleep demon um i don't know man this is kind of a good matchup and an interesting one because freddy krueger when he's in the real world is kind of easy to kill but he does have that like fucking the knife razor razor hand glove um but Pumpkinhead, mm-hmm. how you kill Pumpkinhead is you essentially have to kill the host. So if some, say, like, Freddy Krueger becomes aware of where the hell Lance Henriksen is, like, Pumpkinhead's fucked. <laughs> Which, I mean, if you're a dream demon, I think you know where the hell these people are. So I don't know, man. Oh, here you go. That's a good question. Well, what is... What if he has sleep apnea? <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> I don't know. It'll be easier to kill. Yeah, I guess because he's constantly sleeping, and Freddy has a way to. What what does Pumpkinhead live off of? Like, what keeps him going? Uh, nothing. He's just like a demon of revenge. He he just goes until he kills all the people responsible. Granted, I haven't I I haven't watched any of the sequels of those movies in fucking well over fifteen years, so I don't know if they (laughs) changed the lore at all. I just remember the original. Um. But, dude, I don't know, man. So, I think Freddy with the razor gloves. I think Freddy would cut, like, so Pumpkinhead's born from a little sarcophagus or a cocoon, yeah. right? Yeah. So then uh, he goes to sleep. He goes in the cocoon. He's asleep from the right from the beginning. Freddy's yeah. coming in. And, and I think, Fred, I think Freddy story. would know where that fucking thing is coming out of the ground, and he's going to just slaughter it. Yeah. <laughs> So Plus, and, he's, and he's even if he does come to fruition, I think he would find a way to figure out where whoever the person is cultivating pumpkin head and just slice and dice him to pieces. And Fre- Freddy's turned into a, a worm before when he smokes that big old bong. Look, he's he's already gonna eat the insides of a pumpkin. <laughs> this is actually a good question, Uzi. What would pumpkin head be motivated to kill Freddy? That's a good question. What if uh Say whoever cultivated Pumpkinhead is using the revenge on Freddy because Freddy killed someone they knew. That's that's a good question, but I still think. What about you, Uzi? Who do you think would win? That's a. Re- I still think Freddy with the razor glove, like it's game over. Or like if for some reason Freddy got whoever got Pumpkinhead into the dream world, it's like lights out for Pumpkinhead because he's just like a big goofy fucking thing that could topple over at any minute. <laughs> Freddy. Yeah. All right. So he'd be motivated to fight Freddy because he's a pumpkin, pumpkin head. So well, he's not actually a you pumpkin. Don't get, head. You don't want to get carved. <laughs> You're going to be terrified of the. See, this is why I, I I'm happy to have you on here, Brad, because you think pumpkin head is just essentially a guy with a pumpkin head. <laughs> Hold on one second, because this is going to be funny. <laughs> Yeah, he's got a you know, smashed up pumpkin face. Just for the sake of knowing, you know what he looks like. This is what Pumpkinhead looks like. Yeah, he looks like this the the skeleton xenomorph from what Aliens uh, Resurrection. <laughs> All right, so Uzi Uzi says in the real world he thinks Pumpkinhead would win. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry, but Freddy's moving on here. All right, who the hell do we got next? Okay, Last. all right. All right, this one, man, a lot of the... See, that's what's cool about this, too, is a lot of the first matchups are kind of, like, no-brainers, at least in our opinion. Uh, and I think Brad will agree. And yeah, comment below know. who you believe would have fought. Yeah, yeah, by all means. And if you can do us a favor, do, uh, click, <laughs> click, the, click the thumbs up because it does help us out. And here we go. Here's our next matchup. 
Papão. Fight. Slow walking knife or slow walking knife. Oh shit, hold on before I even forget. Just because we have I have I forgot to do it already, which is Let's see. So, who did we have? Ah, here we go. Let's just share this to the screen. Brad drew up a little Freddy. Obviously, Brad is a big fan of like superhero shit. So, a lot of them are going to look very like comic y, which is a super cool style. And like, I wonder, I never really read a lot of the horror comics. So, I'd be really curious to see. I know there's like those, a lot of alien comics these days. So, that would be fucking sick. Alien and Predator is uh, owned by Marvel. Yeah. I, dude, I was like, dude, are out. I was digging through like my uh, when my mom was moving, I had to go clear out a lot of like my crap that was just essentially collecting dust down there. <laughs> and like I you. have like some Alien vs Predator comics, which I, sh I should fucking read them. Yeah. Oh, right. remember how like the toys used to come up with come with the little roll up, the little roll up comic? They did. Yeah. I don't remember. Okay. See? Yeah. Okay. The, the very old vintage ones. They'd have the roll up. They'd have a roll up comic in the in the back. It's probably maybe like. Two to three inches by you know six inches when you no shit. Up. Yep. Oh, the ghost yeah. one is so sick. All right, let's get uh who else we got here. And then Brad also has a Mikey Myers. Dun, 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 dun. I'm glad that actually scanned all right, because I did that on a that was a it started out as just a warm-up page. Uh, yeah, and then I actually started to kind of like it so i went with it but like that's on the back of um what my wife brenna printed out uh as a dinner recipe <laughs> nice <laughs> i like scanned drawings man like it, it adds like a certain like layer of coolness to me yeah all right so da, da, da. so yeah man we got michael myers versus ghostface i mean right from the get-go this shit's a like ghostface is a fucking regular guy in a fucking cape. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, uh, but the the well, which one? Which ghost face are we going with? It could be. I I say you pick any fucking one of them, and they're that going up against the Michael knife ghost face from the from the newer one. But oh, I'm like, God. which one? Let's not that? talk about the newer one and you how have, fucking flawed it was. <laughs> and you have Michael what? Myers, the yeah. the tooth fairy. <laughs> um coming out uh you know john wick style in what the second the halloween kills a halloween ends when he he kicks the door and has the girl shoot herself <laughs> so which, which we got more just michael just slowly walk in i mean we got yeah. more upgraded michael <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, Uzi brings up a good point. This is funny too. I just want to share this. William Shatner's tough to kill. He's like a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a great point. Those ghost faces get killed in the movies. Yeah, because they're regular people. Um, Michael Myers is essentially, you don't really, I mean, I guess if you go by the lore of like part four, five, and six, he's guided by like this stupid curse of thorn where he's like i i have to kill every member of my family <laughs> and i'll kill anything that gets in my way and i mean or even if you go by the the first one you know he gets shot six fucking times by donald yeah. pleasance and he's still standing there breathing um but who do you think brad let's 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 hear some pros and cons well we got again we got michael so he's you know one of his powers is you know, regenerative healing. So he just, essentially no what, like, that way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he gets shot and just keeps going. However, Ghostface, you know, he's got the bulletproof vest for only so, so long. And then also, you know, I'm bleeding, man. I'm dying here. You hit me with the phone, dick. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think it's actually, you know, safe to say that, you know, I mean, I think Ghost, if the Ghostface, the Ghostface is, is wearing it, if the ghost face dude is like a true psycho, like wearing the fucking bulletproof vest, it, he might put up a good fight and get off a couple stabs. Or, you know, if it's one of the ghost face from the new one wielding a fucking double barrel shotgun, they might be able to put, <laughs> <laughs> you might be able to put Michael down a little bit, but like, slow him down. But sure. 
Yeah. Like Uzi said, man, that they get killed in the movies unceremoniously a lot of times. Like it gets killed by like little tiny women. So <laughs> I, I think Michael Myers is going to move ahead. So let me update the bracket here on my end. So Michael Myers is moving on. Oh, okay. The next one, next one should be interesting. All right. Bulletproof, but not knife proof. Uzi says I, I <laughs> it's true. <laughs> All right. So who we got battle three battle. Da, 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 da. Where are you? Did I not upload this one? That'd be super funny if I didn't battle five. Oh, one sec. Let me upload this shit. So yeah, Brad, talk about your channel a little bit more while I upload this crap. Yeah, so if you're into comics, um, you know, comic art, manga, manga style art, um, you know, be sure to chime in, to chime in over to my YouTube page and over to my TikTok channel, um, where I'll be, you know, providing character design breakdowns and distracting myself from drawing the xenomorph over here. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I like that you're drawing while we're talking too. It just like adds like more incentive. It's like, look, this dude really does just like, he's just drawing all the time. So I'm drawing, I'm drawing, I'm drawing, I'm drawing and making content uh, about drawing. So yeah. be sure to check out, check out my YouTube channel for um, drawing tips and tricks and for, you know, following along, how to follow along on an art book, such as how to draw the marble way. Um, I'll have other ones coming up. So, be sure to comment, you know, what books you want to learn about and what books you're interested in and also what characters you are interested in drawing. Um, and he learning also, how to draw. Yeah. He also does like these videos where he'll not only show you how to draw like a certain character, but he'll give like background into their lore while like showing like how these characters came to be. And they're super interesting, even for someone like me who like, I don't know shit about, you know, like any of the Marvel stuff or anything like that, but it's super interesting. And it like kind of, it helps me and makes me almost want to be like, Oh, that's cool. I'd watch that. Or I'd read that, you know? All right. So here we go. Battle, battle number four. Bum, bum, bum. Fight. So we have our first good guy. And actually I think our only good guy in Ash Williams and then we have the creepiest of them all because like that, dude the whole leather face stuff man it freaks me out like the fact that it the the, and the, the texas chainsaw massacre all that like mm -hmm. it really freaks me out it, it gets really under my skin i mean <laughs> like, to be fair, the skin. <laughs> yeah all right so yeah you you drew this and what was really oh. funny you sent these over to me so i could share them with everyone that's watching and it's just like it was called gross face <laughs> dude what about dude. texas chainsaw massacre like gets under your skin the fact because that it's it real is, yeah and it's just fucking kind of gross yeah like the, the whole like realness of it like you just gotta like think like um this is to some degree a documentary <laughs> yeah i mean they use a lot of elements from fucking like this story of ed gein and shit and like it is gross and just like the girl like when she's like finally when marilyn burns is finally tied up at that dinner table in that one part in the beginning or i mean in, a, in the original and like the grandpa who's just like i don't know if he's dead half dead or whatever and like they're putting the hammer in his hand and he's like hitting her in the head with the fucking hammer oh. <laughs> <laughs> and the, she's just screaming and yelling i'll never forget like my mom whenever she would watch it with me when she was a kid like or when i was a kid and she would just be like oh my god and it would just stick with her for fucking ever and she'd be like oh my god they're zooming in on her eyes and then oh god that imagine that house it smells so bad like <laughs> oh i didn't even think about that the smell of the house now I'm going to be thinking about that for like all horror movies. <laughs> like Dude. Yeah. Like I mean, just and walking through a regular living room. Like, Hmm. I wonder who kind of fabric softener they got floating around in there. I, I mean, and like what's cool about nowadays, like with all like these Blu-rays and 4Ks and shit coming out, they have like a lot of special features and behind the scenes. They talk about how on the set of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they were using like real, 
like animal parts from a fucking butcher shop. So like it was like 120 degrees and all that stuff is just rotting cool. and just stinking. Ugh, like I think the shoot itself which is almost like scarier than the fucking movie. Mm, but, yum yums. But, yeah. <laughs> and then of course we have Ash Williams from the Evil Dead. And for for the purpose of this one, I think we'll we'll be talking about like Ash and Evil Dead 2 after his hand's been possessed and he's cut it off and has a fucking uh, chainsaw as one arm just so he can put up a good fight against good old Leatherface. And he also has the double barrel shotgun. Mm. So have you seen a lot of the Evil Dead movies, Brad? Or at least like a couple of them? Yeah, I've seen a few of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm familiar with with Ash and, and you know, his, his whole storyline. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, you know, him going up leather Leatherface because, you know, Ash has a brain. Yes. Leatherface does not. So he's not really thinking. He's just... Uh, leather Leatherface is just deep down a mentally challenged hick from Texas who is just doing what his family's telling him. Like, hey, go go kill this guy. Like, we got to make a, a fucking new chili. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, although he does have like you know that that super strength to just like overpower, you know, I don't think he's going to be as quick, quick, quick thinking, quick minded no. as Ash. Yeah, and uh, I think up until uh, I think it was like the Netflix Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Leatherface had never really been like shot before. I could be mm. wrong, but. Mm. You know, and like I think if he takes a couple blasts from Ash's shotgun, like I think, I think Ash is gonna gonna beat him. He may yeah. be bigger, but like, you know, Ash is witty. He may be like a goofball, but he knows what the fuck is going on, and he's fucking killed a bunch of the possessed people from or the deadites from the Evil Dead series. So, mm. what, what's what's he saying here? The truck driver running away is my favorite part. <laughs> That's a good, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, Vicky will love this whenever she gets to rewatch this. I bet <laughs> CJ Graham would tell Vicky that the Texas Chainsaw House must have been her house. Yes. <laughs> Holy fuck. I never saw her so seething mad as when Jason Voorhees from part six, when we were taking a picture with him, was roasting her for how dusty our toys were. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. What, what do you got here? Ash fights demons. I think he could take on a regular guy. Yeah. That, yeah. I think deep down, like Leatherface is just a regular mentally challenged man. And I think, I think as much as I love, dude, I've got fucking Leatherface tattooed on the back of my arm. I love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And it's one of my. You have someone else's skin attached to someone's skin on your skin. Yeah. That reminds me of like that Beavis and Butthead episode where they're like, so let me get this straight. You want a tattoo on your butt of a butt with a butt face tattoo on it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the level of irony all right so let me update this bracket that's uh i think that's like the first upset in my opinion but dude ash all the way ash is definitely gonna kick the shit out of Leatherface. all right so who do we have next let me look at the bracket here oh so we're going to the other side of the bracket okay oh, man it's another it is another <laughs> steal here in my opinion but let me get this video ready and here we go battle number five ba boom fight spit acid all over that deranged freaking doll and call it a night yeah yeah all right before <laughs> before we get into the nitty-gritty let me show some of your some of your doodles here all right so yeah we got the xenomorph versus fucking chucky so here is your Xenomorph, which you're actually drawing right now as well. So I'm drawing another one because, you know, the al aliens, alien Xenomorphs, Predators, you know, out of this horror series, like, they're the ones that I, I hold, you know, so dear mm -hmm. to me from growing up. So, like, the trouble with drawing them is, like, I don't want to fuck it up. <laughs> so like i always hesitate and like put drawing them off as much as like as as much as i want to draw them because they're the ones that i i like the most mm -hmm. i'm always scared to you know like for again like you want it to be know, good if you, if you follow me on instagram or tiktok 
I do a lot of characters that, you know, I like, but not the one, not like my full favorites. Like Venom is my favorite, but I rarely ever draw Venom because it's not going to live up to my expectations. Everyone's our own worst critics. Yes. Yeah. So I got to, I'm working on pushing, pushing through that and everything, but yeah, the Chucky one. Um, the Chucky one is super sick. Hold on, let me pull that Chuck, back up. The, that that one came out pretty pretty good. Um, and like the thing, <laughs> the thing about it too was like I was just thinking of Chucky mm-hmm. and like just getting more and more pissed off and irritated. <laughs> like, like this doll, like dude. I <sighs> well, let me take this out of here first before I go on my little spiel here, dude. When I was a kid. It was Chucky that I just loved, like, with all my heart. I think it was just because, like, you know, he's essentially trying to take over, like, a little kid's body. So I'm like, oh, wow, like, I wonder if I'd be able to fight like Andy Barkley would. But as I've gotten older, like, the more and more I'm like, why didn't they just fucking punt this little shit into fucking (laughs) oblivion, you know? Like, he's fucking not even a foot tall. Like, he'd be so easy to kind of... I don't know. Just get the hell out of the way. Get but, the hell out of here. And, and another thing is like, all right. So we never really like fully learn like the xenomorphs. Um, I don't know if you'd call it like they're they're Do they have like a lust for blood or anything like that? Like, cause they do like shoot the little mouth out and like kill people with it. But like, do they actually eat them? So actually I was, so I was just watching, um, I hate to say it. I had it on because I like to have the movies on when I'm drawing the characters or whoever I'm I'm doing. And I had alien versus predator Requiem on, and they do actually show the alien eating, uh, in the sewer. It's just kind of like sitting there as like the little mouth goes out. Oh yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. I mean, it just goes and puts the, the yes. spear right through its head yes holy shit yeah i forgot about that because i don't i i i mean don't i watch don't watch that movie <laughs> yeah i mean if i love all, me and vicky were having this conversation recently when we were watching like the new trailer for that new fede alvarez one and oh, we were like rip. i was just thinking to myself i'm like dude even those alien vs predator movies like people bash them to shit and i get it i 100 percent get it but because I like the characters so much, like Predator and like the Xenomorph, I don't care how bad the movies are. I'm just happy to see them. But yeah. I fucking forgot there is that scene where he's shooting the little fucking mouth thing out and like essentially eating the dude. Yeah. Holy shit. But yeah, I mean, we, we could go on forever talking about aliens, but this is a no fucking brainer. Even if like there's no blood in Chucky, like it's just like doll stuffing. I think this Chucky, you know, in the first one, they burn him and chop his head off and shoot him in the heart and he's dead. It's so so the even if Chucky came right at the xenomorph, the xenomorph would like grab him. Chucky would get a couple slits in. Yeah. And and then then the acid would fucking burn the knife. Melt his face off. And then next thing, nothing. There's nothing there. It's just a headless chicken. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Fucking no brainer. All right. Let me let me get the Zeno moving on on my bracket over here. All right. Zeno. Okay. Next. Oh, the next the next one should be pretty interesting. All right. Brand. Where are we out? Battle six? Yes. All right. So here we go. Fight. Oh, shit. So this is an interesting one. You got Candyman versus the Creeper from Jeepers Creepers. Oh, I like this. Yeah. (laughs) 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 Yeah. All right. So you have you seen you've seen at least the first Jeepers Creepers? I've seen. What is there? Three of them? There's fucking four of them, if you can believe it. So I so I know that he can fly or it yes. can fly. Yeah. Uh, Jeep, Jeepers Creepers was the one with Justin Long in it in the first one, right? Yeah. That one freaked me out too. Jeepers. Like, I remember. Yeah. Like, I remember like, just Justin Long being behind the the skin or the face. When you first see the face is like probably the best part of that whole fucking movie. You're just, just like, like, holy shit! <laughs> terrifying. So yeah. scared. Um. And so, he yeah. eats. He eats body parts to regenerate so yeah. like if he loses a fucking arm he could realistically yep. just 
All right, so say he's going against Candyman, who is was obviously like a a servant. I hate to use the word slave, but like they 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 lean pretty heavily into that he was like around during that time period in like I guess the 1700s, 1800s. I, I'm not familiar of. I'm not remembering exactly when he was, and then they killed him because he was yeah he was like sleeping with the. Uh, Sleeping with the, so, with the plantation owner's like wife or something like that. So they cut off his fucking arm and like burn him at the stake and like let bees fucking sting him to shit. But now he haunts you after you say his name in the mirror five times. Um, but like the creeper. Yeah, I think like if they were fighting, you know, Candyman's got his like old hook arm and can probably send some bees out after the fucking creeper. But even if the hook for some reason like cuts off the creepers, I don't know, finger or something, the creeper could just fucking like fly overhead of Candyman and fucking bite off part of his hand and boom, he's got some new hands. <laughs> and just literally just fly the fly Candyman just essentially just to the point where he can't breathe or just drop him. Yeah. And then he's kaput splatter. Now, so he's made of bees, right? Okay. Essentially, so yeah. Essentially could. If he did drop them, then he'd just turn into a bunch of bees and then just they fly don't really, away. Yeah, they don't really bees. go into too heavily into the lore about how exactly the bees work. They're just there sometimes. And there we have it. The next. <laughs> yeah, there's the next movie man. when they, they do the a remake round two. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I you never really see him like turn into bees or anything, but he is almost kind of like a dreamlike figure and he can only appear, but that doesn't really matter if they're face to face as much as I hate, like Uzi is talking about here. What we got Uzi is saying, I'll take Candyman because I don't like Victor Salva. Yeah. Victor Salva, the director of Jeepers Creepers one, two, and I think three obviously is a disgusting man who is convicted of fucking pedophilia. Uh, but regardless of the director, I think the who, who creep, is this? Victor Salva, he's the director. In the oh. 80s, he was like convicted and like sentenced to time for Wait, pedophilia. Director, director. And like they just like let him make the Jeepers Creepers movies after the fact. And eventually, because of the internet, that news like came out and like, you know, now people hate the Jeepers Creepers movies, but it's like ugh, one of those things that's like, oh man, can you like separate the art from the artist kind of thing? But I don't know. I think creature wise, we'll put that fucking Victor Salva bullshit aside. Um, I think the creeper is going to fucking wipe the floor with fucking Candyman. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here That's we go. That's a good fuck That's the a good director, point. but the yeah. creeper is creeping forward. Yeah. All right. So Candyman can disappear and reappear wherever he wants. He is mystical. That is true, but like even if he gets like a couple good hits off the creeper, the creeper can just fucking fly around him and bite off any damage he ensues and re fucking appear and re regenerate or whatever the fuck. Does Candyman have a truck? <laughs> <laughs> There's there you go. There's the next crossover movie. The Candyman is actually like a candy delivery man. <laughs> all right so let me adjust the bracket here so we got the creeper is gonna move ahead and who is next okay now this next one is gonna be hard for me to um hold my feelings towards the movies at bay actually no i, I kind of like the movies equally but here we go fight all right, so we've got the tall man from the Phantasm so, movies, of course, versus Pinhead, the essential, essentially the leader of the Cenobites from Hellraiser. So, I'm not gonna lie, I don't really know much about either of these. I did. Okay. Uh, Hellraiser always kind of freaked me out with like seeing the hooks in the skin. That was mm -hmm. something that always like kind of turned me off from from watching Hellraiser, mm -hmm. uh, the original ones. And then um, I started I was, as I was you know doing the, doing a few of these drawings. I put the new Hellraiser on. Ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like the new one, like the remake one. Here's an art tip: 
hold your paper or your canvas when you're erasing? Would you rip it? No, it just creased. Creased, creased the stupid little leprechaun on the back end. <laughs> Anywho, um, yeah, no, I, I got like halfway through it, uh, and then I think I, I mean, the the remake is fine, but it just wasn't the same. Yeah, but so you haven't gone back and revisited any of the original Hellraiser movies? Like, no, I have not. No. No, I highly suggest doing it just because it's as far as like something that's actually really scary. They kind of do that really well because it's like you said, like the the hooks and the chains and shit going into people's skin, specifically like in the first movie is really fucking gnarly and kind of gross. Okay. And the idea of like them bringing well, not them, but um, like the lament configuration bringing back the Uncle Frank by like, you know, getting his goo and shit all together in some like T-1000, T-2 style way and like having Julia have to kill a bunch of guys so he could like suck off their skin and regenerate all his fucking, oh, it's gnarly, dude. It's oh, okay. very like sadomasochist because I don't know. All right, so what, what we got here? And then we got, of course, the tall man. Now, did I ever make you watch the Phantasm movies or anything? I can't remember. I don't think so. I don't think I no. Okay, so the so the tall man who is our lead big librarian. Guy. What's that? Lead librarian. <laughs> he is essentially like um I don't know if you'd call him like a mortician, but he runs like the giant mortuaries, a Morningside Cemetery. And what we learn while watching the first movie is that He's taking all the dead bodies of people and sending them through this like portal to another dimension where he shrinks them down into like little minions that he uses to like do his bidding. So he's like essentially an alien or like an interdimensional being okay. who just like makes me fucking shit up and killing people with his like his spheres that he sends out that like suck your brain out, cut people's ears off and shit. It's really sick. So it's, so it's a sphere versus a cube. So we have the magic. Guess, eight ball yeah, here's versus, our, our... We have the magic eight ball versus the Rubik's cube. <laughs> yes. This is a good point. Is it just the tall man or do we get his little minions too? I mean, Wait, I think minions? we got Pixar in the bunch in the bunch. Well, dude, his little minions are like he kind of sends them out. Like when the sphere, you know, gets stuck, he sends his little tiny minion hooded minions out, and like you know, they attack as well. So I mean, these, if we, like, are these little mini me's of him, or are these like little demons? Uh, they're little demons of whoever the dead people were. So, like in the movie, one of the uh, one of the characters, uh, was it one of their brothers? I can't remember, but it, it's someone that we see die in the very beginning of the movie. And later on, we see him as a minion squished down. So like they have like Ooh. some of like their same facial features and shit, but okay. so yeah, I'd say we do get like the spheres. We do get his little minions, but in the same regard, since he's got all that, let's also say that pinhead also can conjure up like butterball and chatterer and the female Cenobite as well. So this is a fucking battle, a fucking battle, man. But I think when it comes to the sphere flying at like Pinhead's head, he's also got those pins that are kind of like preventing it from like sucking his fucking brain out. Yep. Uh, granted, they do have like extender pieces that like, you know, could saw into him. But I think like Pinhead would like kind of utilize the chains to his advantage and like knock the fucking spheres out of the way. And he would just use the also like all the chains and shit to like rip apart the little minions with no problem. And in the second Phantasm film, he gets like uh whatever the fuck you'd call like the tools to like de blood a person. Like what would what are those called, Brad? Do you have any idea? De blood a person. Uh tool to de blood a person yeah i don't know well regardless we yeah, don't know like the fucking search is yeah yeah fucking um yeah do me a google a bloodletting uh, tool uh, yeah bloodletting so like lancet that's how they kill him yeah. in the second one they like stick all the shit they use at the mortuary and he starts all his yellow blood starts fucking squirting out and it's super fucking awesome factors um, 
Yeah. Lancet. Here we go. That, that's exactly what they are. His little, little minions. Demons little and demons monk and monk robes. That's exactly what they are. They're super <laughs> cool and fucking weird looking, man. But I love <laughs> Phantasm, uh, which just had like its 45th anniversary, is like probably my favorite movie of all time. Probably just because I saw it at a really young age and it was like the first like psychedelic kind of movie I had ever seen. Yeah. But regardless of my feelings for the movie, I love Hellraiser. Like I have fucking giant toys that I'm looking at right now as well. Yeah. Um, regardless of my feelings on the films, I think embalming tools. Thank you. Fucking when you're sitting in front of a camera, you can't think of like a word like embalming. <laughs> can't think period you can't you think know, period i'm like i'm like am i looking at the camera am i looking at my computer am i looking at the camera um but yeah man i i think pinhead's running away with this one as much as i love the tall man and phantasm i think if face to face pinhead's taking him down all right so chains in the chat chains in the chat chains, chains in the in comments the <laughs> all right so next next up Oh man, it's a bit of another another uh, walk away win in my opinion, but we'll see what other people have to say. So here we go. Boom. Fight. Ronald McDonald is getting slashed, man. Dude, I, I think if I had any kind of like early He's be peeping through peeping through the the sewer, and then all of a sudden there's gonna be three a green three dots. fucking Boom. dots. Bam. Yeah. Uh, dude, it was one of the move, one of those movies when I was growing up that was, I was so fucking scared of clowns because of that movie. Cause I yeah. saw it when I was like fucking four, <laughs> <laughs> um, granted not anymore. It's not so scary. It's kind of goofy as fuck, but More predators, annoying. another, literally Pred the, the, the remake just pissed me off. Like he literally just, it was just annoying. Like, uh, go away. Go away. I, I, I liked the remake. So yeah, interchangeable. Let me change this also. Fuck. I forgot. Uh, do I have that one? Da, da, da. Which predator is that? Was that predator from Predator Two? Oh, dude, let's that. That's just me doing a Google and being like, find me a uh, a predator without the background. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's just say any. Anyway. Find me a predator without a background. <laughs> yeah, like any, any one of the predators, really, because there are a ton of them. And also with Pennywise, let's also say it could be Tim Curry's Pennywise or Bill Skarsgård. It doesn't matter. I just prefer the original miniseries over the remake. As much as I think the remake was okay, the first one at least. Um, but Predator, dude, he's a fucking hunter. Yeah. This is literally what he does. He yeah. hunts people, blows them the to fuck. All right, let's blows see. Blows the fuck? Blows them to, blows them and... to fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and you know, if I was monetized, we're demonetized, baby. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. and he's got the knife thing. I, I don't think, and Pennywise in the original one uh, gets fucking sprayed with an asthma inhaler and it turns into like battery acid and fucking melts half his face. Yeah. But what are you, I mean, you're a big fan of Predator. Me too. I think Predator's yes. one of those fucking movies that's like, I just watched it again last weekend just because I had a hankering for some like real manly kind of shit. <laughs> uh, and it's like, it's still just as awesome as ever, the first 100%. one. But, but um, yeah, so let's, let's hear your two thoughts on who you would think would win, even though this is kind of a runaway victory for Predator, it seems. Uh, I mean, you you heard it right there first, right at the beginning. Ronald, Ronald McDonald's getting blown to smithereens, you know. He's he's hiding out there, waiting for, you know, little kids and all that, and Predator just yes. going to snip him out. And then if, you know, they go to head-to-head, toe-to-toe, you know, he can turn himself into this massive clown or whatever, but – Predator's agile. He's quick. He's gonna, they're going to be jumping left and right, like, and he's going to be fucking invisible sometimes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> next thing you know, boom, he's boom, a boom, boom, fucking boom. he's a fucking hunter. Yeah. <laughs> this is what he does. Yeah. If, if Predator showed up to do like a Mortal Kombat, like we have going on right now, essentially in these brackets, he is, I, he is prepared, dude. Like, yeah. who knows what other fucking tools he'd bring along he's like oh shit i gotta fight a clown like maybe he brings something that clowns hate like a water spray gun or something with acid in it i <laughs> now i have a question and this might yeah. just be for a whole nother live stream that we'll have to do because we're sure. gonna have way too much time going into it 
Um, so make sure that you're subscribed for more. Um, I would love to do this tuned. a lot. It's fun because it's all we've, theoretical. <laughs> we've all we've all we've we've seen the xenomorphs. They can uh, procreate. You know, they have the queen alien. They can give birth. Yeah, we've only seen dude predators, right? Yeah, yeah. Good point. I, dude. I'm surprised. So yeah. where is this where is this mother predator? Yeah, and how are they born? Are they born out of eggs? Are they born like humans? That's a that's a fucking good question, man. And I now that you said it, I'm like, fuck, Prey 2 is gonna come out and it's gonna be like <laughs> <laughs> Which I so, hope, dude. Prey ripped. It got uh it got greenlit, man. Prey was yeah. fucking incredible. I fuck the backlash it, any yeah. backlash it got. I thought it was an awesome predator movie. It was fucking leagues better than the last one with the guy with Tourette syndrome and shit. Yeah. And like the predator, like essentially thinking the kid with autism is like the leader of the human race. <laughs> oh my God. Holy, I totally forgot about that. Movie. Yeah, man. It's like, what deep I after I got out of the movie, I was like, that was fun. It was whatever. And then like, as I started thinking about it, I'm like, no dude, that was awful. <laughs> That's how it was with friggin' Thor love and thunder. I was like, eh, it was all right. And then I was like, no, they completely destroyed gore the god butcher the man gore the kidnapper and was gore uh that's a whole other story for a whole nother live stream so make sure you're subscribed to at the artistic avenger and at shred nj um what was gore was uh what's his name fucking um christian bale christian bale from american psycho that's right and batman holy yeah damn that sucks i saw pictures i obviously haven't seen it uh i can't keep up with the storyline the comic book the original comic book storyline is one of the best storylines that whole saga of jason aaron again like we can nerd out this another time on my channel when i have you over um but yeah like they just did not do that character justice they seriously like spoilers for anyone out there who hasn't watched it though but also like don't waste it's your been out long time. enough who gives a fuck don't waste your freaking time um because that's one Marvel movie I will not ever rewatch. But yeah, they like he, he kills one god. You can't be god a, a god butcher and kill one god. Oh yeah, that's fucked up. The god butcher <laughs> and he kills one. And then he just kidnaps and kill. All right, so I'm All saying right. Predator is killing it. Yeah, yeah. E let me let me update that real quick, and then Uzi will get. I I gotta get to some of your comments because they're really funny. <laughs> Rune animals are getting popped. Yeah, Predator. This is this one is. That's no brainer here. All right, so let's see. We got Arnold beat him. Danny Glover beat him. Hey man, that is true. <laughs> uh, Adrian Brody beat him. For God's sake. Um, I think Pennywise is tougher than Adrian Brody. Yes. Uh, oh, I love this. You can land stealth bombers on Adrian Brody's nose. <laughs> you can. Oh, and here we go. Like our conversation. The mother predator is Fran Dresser. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really fascinating thing that I never thought about. You never see how the predators come to be or are burned or are they having sex or is like hunting too important? Who the fuck yeah. knows? All right. So, all right. That ends our first round of the bracket. Let's see who we got next. So we're going to go back up to the top of the lineup. All right. So put this together real quick and take this down we got round two let me throw these guys into the video all right so at the top of the lineup now if you have been following along let's go fight the rematch for the ages yeah do you you covered this in a previous live stream mm -hmm. uh, recapping all the the jasons and everything but who yeah there was no there was no full win of who won in no jason right and as much as people like you know can hate on that movie and i get it completely like what more could you do to be more entertaining than what they gave you it's essentially like like the style of movies you like it was like them fighting was comic book level shit yeah. the amount of blood and like them flying through the air. It's like, if they tried to do that movie seriously, it just would have been a colossal failure, I yeah. think. Um, but yeah, let's recap. Let me, let me pull, actually pull this up before I even get into that. 
this is pretty user friendly, I gotta say. So <laughs> thank you, thank you, Streamyard. Okay. And for anyone out there who wants to draw uh, xenomorphs, just know it takes a lot of patience because there's a lot of friggin' fine lines and details in those things. I yeah, I can only imagine. <laughs> Um, so let's see at the end of Freddy vs. Jason, Freddy is brought into the real world and they are battling like motherfuckers. Um, uh, we get Freddy loses his arm. Uh, Jason gets the shit kicked out of him and Freddy's glove goes into like his face. But with the help of Monica Kina, the final girl of that movie, Monica. <laughs> he gets stabbed through the chest with his own glove and Jason is the last man standing and walks out of the water holding Freddy's head. So technically there wasn't really a winner. I guess Freddy kind of really beat the shit out of him, but last man standing was Jason. I think Jason's going to take the win on, on this one. I mean, you take the, I dude, you're preaching to the choir as much as I uh, gloves off. Yeah, I mean, I am a much bigger fan of Jason Voorhees than Freddy Krueger, but like feelings of the movies aside, I think because Jason also doesn't sleep, he gets put to sleep, but he doesn't at actually least we never sleep. see him. Yeah, we never really see him sleep except in Freddy vs. Jason when they drug him with all that shit. Like, uh, if, if he's going, if you're going into dreams, you have to have some type of a brain in there, which is. <laughs> his they never show that do they ever just show like freddie like dancing around in jason's brain going like knock knock i mean they kind you kind of you get a uh a vision of jason walking with a dead body through like this nightmare wetland dragging the body and like throwing her in like this closet of dead bodies Whoa. uh and then yeah he was also like scared of water which is total bullshit because the ronnie you the director of that like only watched the first three movies and didn't realize that further on down the line, Jason's going to be uh, walking into water and <laughs> doing fine with water. But yeah, I don't know, man. Feelings of the movies aside, I think like size wise and everything, like Jason is just hulking and would just chop Freddy's fucking razor glove off. No questions asked. Yeah. 100%. Oh, I like this. Monica Kina. Uzi says, we all win her wet t-shirt. Yes, we do. Bingo. Welcome to my world, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. So, I, I don't know, man. I love Freddy. I love Jason. I think, realistically, with the Freddy vs. Jason movie, if you put your feelings aside and just look at it as like a almost a comic book style movie, it was great. And if we're talking technical, Jason was the one who walked out of the water. So I think Jason's going to move ahead here. All right. So the bracket is updated. Oh, shit. Okay. So next up, let me take this guy down. Hold on. What do we got? Uzi, thank you, by the way, for always coming in on these live streams. I always like what you got to say, dude. And you're fucking pretty well versed. Freddy died by fire, Jason by water. How do we use that? That's Ronnie you for sure. Uzi, out of this lineup, who do you want to see? Uh, who do you want to see drawn? Or who's your favorite out of this pick, Uzi? Yeah. I, I think out of this, out of all these people, who is your favorite regardless? Like, regardless of who you think would win. Actually, yeah. Tell us who your favorite is and who do you think would win deep down? I've got all my money on a certain person. But all right, so next up in the second round, we have here we go. Fight. Ooh, that's a good that's a good one. Yeah, all right. So I think I have oh my bad. All right. As soon as I get done saying it's user friendly, I fuck it up. <laughs> Uh, user friendly. It's not bill friendly. It's not bill friendly. I'm a fucking nerd when it comes to this fucking technology shit, but I deep down don't know what to click ever. <laughs> okay, so all right, here we go. Here's Uzi's response. We got Jason is my favorite slasher. Hard to beat him. I I'm completely with you there. When it comes down to the franchise style shit, I love the Alien movies and Phantasm movies and Predator movies. 
and fuck, I love all this shit, but deep down, I I think I'd rather throw on a Friday the Thirteenth movie over any of these. Nice. What, what about you, Brad? Um, I mean, the Predator and Alien movies. I mean, Predator is probably going to be my absolute favorite to draw out of this, um, mm-hmm. just because of the the suit and the all the different you know moves that you can kind of put them in because you know that was kind of one thing i was having a hard time with like at first because i was trying to draw some of these characters and more like action some shit some action shots and which if you want to pull up the freddy one i can you know i can speak to that one let's see Um, and that i didn't complete this one but i think i showed you it originally i I Which one do you want me to pull up? The Freddy? Yeah, you can see the Freddy and then right here. Oh, shit. That Jason is sick. You can kind of see where I put a little bit more motion into it yeah, um, and all that. But I was having a little bit of a difficult time, like, you know, trying to, one, draw these characters as true to their persona. Mm. Um, and while I was also, like, giving it my... Uh, your spin my, you know, my my style so but like you saw on the freddy one you know that was a little bit easier to do because you got the hand coming at you yeah uh, i dude i like seeing them in comic form it's like something you don't see every day so it's it's cool to see that take but uzi says ash ash has is built to kill anything uh, yeah i don't know so here we go michael myers versus ash michael myers versus ash um ash is built to kill anything he is is ash uh can ash die of course he's just a regular guy deep down he just uh he just so happens to be in uh the wrong place at the wrong time every time or like someone he's with or himself including is included is uh listening to the audio tape of the books being fucking spoken aloud or someone he's with is reading from the Necronomicon and summoning the deadites. Um, I don't know, man, this one's kind of, kind of a tough one for me. Uh, when it comes to Michael Myers, we've seen him take bullets before. Yep. Um, Christ, he's been fucking blown up and like lit on fire. Uh, but face to face with Ash and a fucking chainsaw. So you, I don't so you, know, man. Michael Myers, the Tooth Fairy, he's right. going to be all about trying to get Ash's teeth, and then that's when <laughs> Ash is going to be able to get real close and just chainsaw his head off while also yeah. shotgunning him to the chest. I don't know, I man. Think I, I might have to agree and go go with Ash. I Michael don't... wants those teeth, man. You saw him in that that Halloween sprinkling the teeth. Yeah. <laughs> What a fucking weird scene that was. But I still love the Halloween 2018 was my favorite like, <laughs> to do it one. Like he goes from from just straight stabbing people yeah. to now like, oh, I'm just gonna <laughs> dude. Go that would be so oh, funny that. to watch. Like how he came to I guess it's the teeth from like the fucking um auto mechanic that he's bashed yeah. into the fucking yeah, counter there. <laughs> okay so that so that okay that makes a little bit more sense if he's bashing them then the teeth are spewing out and he collects them but no again like where like again they made him <laughs> they turned him into like this super this super killer in that that yeah. new trilogy where he went from just like uh to now he's he's collecting teeth to scare people he's kicking doors to, to pinball bullets to people's heads all right here we go <laughs> Buster Buster Ryan. Ryan. You know, Michael 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 Myers. Myers. You look like some chicken fried motherfucker. <laughs> That's a good point. And you're kind of like changing my thought process, both of you guys. <laughs> Fuck. Um, deep down, I thought Michael Myers would take this one no problem. But yeah, shit. I, I think Ash has got him beat. Like Michael Myers, if he even was able to get a couple hits off on Ash, like Ash could be could take a knife wound almost. And then while that's happening, just saw him in half with the fucking Jeez. chainsaw, you know? Yeah. Damn. And then All right. what they always talk about, they got to separate the head from Michael Myers. Didn't, just, they, didn't they say that in one of them? The only no. thing that we could do is detach the head. No, but I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis at the end of H2O before they, you know, made it 
that she didn't kill Michael Myers. She does chop his fucking head off. But doesn't she have a line that she says that? She's like, I'm going to cut his fucking head off. Maybe. I, dude, I, <laughs> she says so many weird things in the newer, the newer, like David Gordon <laughs> Green trilogy that I'm just like, dude, I, okay, lady, he doesn't even care about you. You just keep somehow getting in his way. His way. <laughs> <laughs> Let him go home. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's funny. Busta Rhymes. <laughs> has the power to change a thought process damn all right so i'm not gonna have a a video because i preemptively made a couple videos for like the fight sequences uh thinking like all right this is a no-brainer this is gonna win dang but damn y'all swayed me and i didn't think y'all could sway me ash is moving forwards ash 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 chainsaws right. in the comments if you're rooting yeah. for ash. <laughs> All right, so let's see. We're moving up to the other side of the bracket now. Let me just see who that was. All right. Creep and Zeno. Here we go. And Babu. Fight. Ooh, this is a good one. Creeper yeah. versus... Creeper. I, so, yeah. yeah. The uh, the idea alien. of the creeper being able to fly is a kind of a game changer, but dude, I well, let me throw this guy up here. If you're in the fight, I mean, can the creeper regrow its friggin' head, its brain? Because you know that xenomorphs the the it does owl. regrow. Uh, in part two, they like run over his. I think it's part two or part one. I can't. They all fucking mash together for me <laughs> because I I don't like. I, I don't know. They're not movies I rewatch often, but he does eat someone's head to regenerate his head. What? How? Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, and then at the end of the first one, he's eating fucking Justin Long's eyeballs to regenerate oh, his eyes. Uh. <laughs> Um, but dude, I don't know, dude. I think the Zeno, this is a Zeno, dude. I mean, I'm going Zeno. Yeah, I mean, I'm going like... Zeno as well. Are we on Earth in outer space? I think either, either or. I think it's a, a you know, a lot of these. I think they're going to be on Earth. You know, I mean, the yeah, we'll, we'll aliens, say they're on Earth. aliens came to Earth. Technically, they didn't. Technically, the alien, the xenomorphs have never been to Earth. If in you like, look deep, be deep enough into the lore, they've never been on Earth before. Okay. Well, I'm going like, off of movies. That matters, but I think either way, this is a runaway victory with the xenomorph. I think it's shredding the creeper to pieces, and he can't, he can't regenerate from eating the xenomorph you know i think if yeah. he tries to eat it the acid is gonna the burn his gonna... fucking insides yeah. out which is something i did not think about but yeah yeah all right Hello. yeah this, one, this one's i guess more of a runaway victory than i thought but deep down yeah this is a no-brainer the fucking creeper tries to eat anything from the xenomorph trying to regenerate and that acid is just melting the shit out of his insides and killing him so xeno's oh. moving on and okay, get this guy off the screen here. Let's pull this up. Where are we at? All right, here we go. This is round two, battle number four. Ba Boom. Fight. So Pinhead versus Predator, dude. That's a good one. I mean, I think that the, the most fun thing about this is that like these. In reality, in even in film world, these people would never be pitted against one another. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of funny to think about, like trying to add like their backstory to as why this guy would fucking win. Uh, let me pull that up. There we go. All right, Brad, you enlighten essentially Uzi because Uzi is the best when it comes to these live streams. He can talk to this shit. Uh, but I am going to take a leak. So you you go ahead and add your thoughts, and I'll be right back. Okay, so as I've mentioned before, um, I don't really have too much knowledge of the Hellraiser because uh, it freaked me out with all the hooks and everything. Um, but the Predator, again, like with him being an Ultra Hunter, uh, or them being an Ultra Hunter, 
I mean, that's going to go hand-to-hand combat. That's going to be pretty good, but also Hellraiser's got the, the chains. Um, he is going to be a little bit harder to cut through with all the, the pins going around. Um, let's see. So I would say the Predators got a fighting chance, but Hellraiser... It's also got the the cube going on. Hmm. What do we got? Here, Bill is scared of Hellraiser 2. That's what you say. <laughs> 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 there um, are there are moments in uh the hellraiser series where i am a little like freaked out by it but i fucking love that's hellraiser. the whole point of watching them isn't it yeah yeah here i'll add that since you <laughs> <laughs> i fucking i love Hellraiser. even like the bad ones i kind of like so this uh i mean this one kind of makes me me sad to say but i mean i think i think hellraiser's got it because I, does hellraiser have pins all over his body no, just his face. Just his Pin face. Head. Okay, so his chest and other ligaments are vulnerable. Yes. Okay. So he's got yeah. chains. That yeah, come but dude, the I think when it the only way you can summon Pinhead and the Cenobites is by solving the puzzle box, the lament configuration. I think okay. because the predator is a hunter if for some reason this ever did actually come to be the predator would be so prepared because he's a hunter. He'd be like, Oh, you know what? I need a Cenobite head for my fucking trophy room. He would sit there, solve the fucking puzzle box just with the sole purpose of fighting these things. (laughs) And I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw a predator solving a frigging Ruby's puzzle box. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, I, dude, I I think this is a runaway victory for Predator because he is built he's built for battle. He this is what he does. You yeah. know what I mean? Yep. Um, you you bring up a good point that like you know, Pinhead and the Cenobites are gonna have like the chains and stuff coming to like rip apart the Predator, but the Predator's also going to have like his invisibility cloak. They don't know where the fucking chains bring, are gonna have to go. Big ass brain in that giant oversized dome of theirs so yeah and he also has like you know the giant knife fucking appendage that like he can swipe away the chains with yeah he can shoot the fucking gun at pinhead and kaboom he's fucking gone i mean he blew out fucking jesse ventura's chest in like two seconds boom so hellraiser later yeah sorry Pinhead. as much as i i fucking love hellraiser i think predator predator's built for this competition dude like he he would almost would sign up for it. Whereas like some of the others, like Ash would probably be like, Ooh, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So yeah, the predator is going to move on. I am sorry, pinhead. Heck yeah. All right. So let me take this guy off the screen. So because you and Uzi have swayed me, I am not going to have a card to have on the bottom here. So it is going to be, I don't, I won't have a video for it either, but our God, what is this? What would that be? The championship match? Well, quarterfinal matches or something. Is going to, yeah. It's going to be Jason Voorhees versus Ash. Jason so, Voorhees versus Ash. Yeah. Now let's take into account that Jason is undead and Ash is kind of familiar with, you know, dealing with demons and the undead. But as we've seen in Jason X, which you love to bring up to me, (laughs) (laughs) uh, Jason does get blown to absolute oblivion and turned into a cybernetic fucking killing machine in Jason X. He's Wolverine. Yeah. In that one. Yes. And even in, even in Jason goes to hell after they fucking the FBI or CIA, whatever the fuck you want to call those people (laughs) blow him up. His heart is so strong that it convinces the coroner to fucking eat his heart so he could become the coroner. Yeah. <laughs> so 
let's just say Ash is Ash, even in the Evil Dead movies and the TV show. He is kind of a dumbass deep down. Okay. I think, say he saws Jason up to shit, blows him away with the shotgun a bunch. I think Jason's like undead heart is going to convince Ash to eat it. And then Jason is Ash. <laughs> Whoa. So I, I think, um, yeah, that actually is a good point. They were going to actually make this a movie. Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash is a real comic book that was supposed to be the Freddy vs. Jason sequel that never got off the ground. I did yeah. actually read through the first one of those. Um, but dude, I think Jason's running away with this one. Unless, Brad, enlighten me with anything you have to uh, fight think, that argument. I think, J I mean, Jason, again, he's like the, you know, like you were saying before, he's like the Hulk. You know, he's just kind of he's, he he's powering he's, through and you know, like no matter what, he's just going to keep bashing and bashing and bashing. And, you know, I think uh, with, with Ash coming, going toe to toe with him, he's going to be wetting himself a little bit. Yeah. I mean, he definitely would be scared. He is like a chicken shit. And, but that's what makes him so endearing is that even though he's so dumb and like the least likely hero, he somehow figures it out or lucks his way into figuring out how to kill these fucking deadites. <laughs> Don't you dare call Bruce Campbell and tell him that Jason would kill him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me adjust the bracket, but Hey, you guys had a bracket buster, dude. I literally, I was like filling this out. I'm like, in my head, I know who's going to take this, but you, you, Nope. Ozzy and Brad, you guys both had a bracket buster for me, which is fucking crazy. Um, but Jason's going to take it this time. Jason is moving on to the finals. All right, so who do we got next? Our second quarterfinal matchup. What we got here? All right. Let's do it. Fight. Another rematch for the ages. So, Brad, you I have mean, you, you have gotta, strong you have strong feelings for both of these. So, Enlighten me. So both, uh, and I. The, I mean the you know the 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 movies, the everything like the the storyline, just even like the thought process, like they you know the aliens are just thoughtless just trying to serve the queen now if it was the queen versus the predator i feel like there'd be a little bit more of a challenge but literally like the predator is literally like that's just what they do like that's they what, i mean they, even if we're talking in the movie alien yeah. versus predator they go there to like become and it men. takes multiple 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 aliens multiple you know and they're even just like fuck ripping them up. through them ripping yeah. them splashing them like the uh, getting the cross wire on them like even and, though, you know the alien puts up a fight with with putting a tail through them they got the the predators got the healing kit and everything yeah and you know. that is true there is the one scene where like the one predator goes to like slice the head off of one of the xenomorphs and his like knife thing like starts like eroding from the acid which is pretty sick yeah but this is you know oz oz <laughs> ah xenomorph versus predator yeah I, dude the predator even in predator 2 has a xenomorph like skull on his trophy wall which yep. kind of essentially like let this made this whole thing come to fruition yeah um but dude even in alien versus predator it, he kills the queen at the end with the help of that lady of course but yeah yeah i mean <laughs> this is insane but one Adrian Brody could take him down. Yes, Adrian yes. Brody. <laughs> now I got to put Predators on later. Later dude, tonight. I, I like I like Predators, dude. I thought I it was entertaining. Gonna... I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I I think half the reason I actually enjoyed it is that it was like on like their home turf sort of thing, and the characters yeah. were all super fucking weird. Like you know, the, you get walks all walks of life. Like you get the serial killer. You get the mercenaries. You get like the Yazutka or whatever it's called, like from like Asian yeah. culture. Yeah, let's, let's all agree that you know, fine. You know, Adrian Brody. Yeah, <laughs> okay, probably shouldn't have won. 
Now, if they made it, it was Toe for Grace that won. Dude, now yeah. I'm pissed. <laughs> I mean, I thought that you was great Venom. In the movie. Don't ruin this for me, too. Yeah, dude, I thought that was great, though, like seeing Toe for Grace play like a villain for once. You know, he yeah. always plays like the fucking cute ass nice boy. And I'm just like, yeah. man. But when he flip flops and you learn that he is like a fucking psychopath, yeah. like that was that was pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah. Good point in that movie. Uh, hated that Danny Tre- Trejo ties in two seconds. Yeah. And then they uh, mimic his voice and he's like, help. 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 <laughs> but let me adjust the bracket here. Yep. Predator is running away here. All right. Predator is moving on. And here we go. We are going to the finals, baby. Let finals. Me All right. And here we go, baby. Fight. All right. This one. I mean, come on. I mean, dude, as much what? as I as much as I love this is tough. I mean, this is tough for me morally because I fucking <laughs> just love, love Jason so much. <laughs> Um, but like we've said already in previous battles, dude, it's just like this is what the predator does. Predator signed up for. Yeah, like it, it's almost like the predator would show up at Crystal Lake. Like, all right, can't wait to have this hockey mask he's skeleton just, he's just, skull the on my wall. Just like, just waiting, <laughs> just waiting yeah. in the lawn chair. Like, come on, walk up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think this would be something I would actually really want to see. Uh, <laughs> just because i love predator so much too um but yeah i mean even jason at his biggest is probably the same size as arnold schwarzenegger and like in the original predator film you see the predator hold up arnold and he's like a foot taller than than arnold is yeah. and it's just like i think the predator would like you know do that at times and like Jason would have his machete like going through the predator and it would, you know, probably yeah. bend him up a little bit, but healing kit. Yeah. But give me any, you have any argument as to why the predator shouldn't be the walk, walk away winner here. Do you have any, anything here? Um, the only way I see it is if, is if, uh, Jason acts fast enough and chops off the predator's head. True. That again, is the like, only way. It's going to you know. be pretty hard for him for, for him to sneak up on on the predator. Yeah, even with the oh, but you know what might actually throw a wrinkle in all of this? The predator does only see in like heat vision. Yep. So if we're oh, dealing oh, with okay. if we're, so yeah. if we're dealing with undead Jason, does he give off a heat signature? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good call. That's something I and didn't think also, about. If may I, may I remind you, if yeah. we are dealing with Jason X. Yeah, <laughs> the predator will not be able to cut through that. Yeah, it's true. Adamantium. <laughs> oh, Uzi, what do you got to say here? Yeah, but does the predator have permission to enter camp? No, be Moscow. You need to get permission. <laughs> Good point. Jason has killed more people on screen than any other villain. That is true. But dude, I think even if Jason was to put the predator down and incapacitate him. The Predator does have that self-destruct thing on his fucking arm. And the oh, Predator oh, would oh. just not let you win. Yeah. No matter what, he's fucking nuking the whole planet with you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Uzi, unless you have an argument as to why Jason should win. I mean, I love Jason the most. But I think the Predator, as a hunter, is going into this whole tournament, taking it away, and is going to win. It's seeming like it right now. There could be, there, there could be a twist or a turn. I like this. The predator likes to take his ball and go home. Yeah, or just blow everything up when he doesn't. Predator likes to take his ball and go home. <laughs> 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 oh what? God! What? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What? Screw you guys! I'm going home or blowing you up. <laughs> All right, so predator is the winner of our March Mad Men tournament. So let me update the bracket oh, here. Wait, that's the fi- that was the final that battle? Was it. That was our final matchup, oh, man. We, we actually got through it a lot quicker. I'm sitting here setting everything up. I'm like, this might take us three fucking hours. 
Damn, Predator for the win. Predator yeah. for the win. And um, dude, honestly, if I had to like make bets or like choose the winner at the end, I think it was always going to be Predator just because of his stupid little computer thing where he's like, you know, if he doesn't get his way, you know, he's blowing everything up. Just like at the end of the original film, he's incapacitated and he's about to blow Arnold up. Yep. But yeah, man, Still that was up. our March madness, March madness, mad men fucking bracket thing where we, <laughs> We theoretically let these guys face off and we gave our two cents as to why we think some would win. We even had some bracket busters with Uzi and Brad convincing me that Ash is going to beat Michael Myers when in my head I had Michael Myers winning, but there you have it. Now let me ask you, Brad, do you watch any of the March Madness, like the real sports thing at all? Um, I do not. Uh, I, I am getting a little bit more into basketball, but also mm -hmm. like right now, you know, that's um, coming to a close and then MLB season is starting up and we just, you yeah. know, had Red Sox first Mariners. So that's right. You're a Seattle boy now. Now but like you either or like I, I win. I mean, I always go for Red Sox. Uh, for my grandfather. That's right. You were a Red Sox fan living in New Jersey. How blasphemous. Is yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, go Sox. I'm not much of a sports fan, but when I was a kid, I always loved the Yankees. But I guess that also like is because they were always really good. And as a kid, you're always like rooting for the champions. You know what I mean? The yep. band runner kind of thing. Um, but when it comes to like the college basketball thing, I don't follow it at all. If I was a betting man, I probably would care more, but I am not. Nope. But uh, Vicky and I like every now and then I'll watch like these random like funny like sports commentators on youtube and they had this one that we watched that we were really into which has had me keeping up with march madness because of this oh, nice. um, this guy brought his dog into the studio and he wanted to go up against his dog over who he who they think <laughs> would win march madness or who would have the better bracket so yeah. he made his selections and he had his dog he would write um he would say like this is North Carolina. This <laughs> is Marquette. And like the dog would pick which hand because there's yeah. trees in each hand and he would write it down on a list. So we've been keeping up like, like going like, Oh man, I hope the dog, I hope the dog wins. <laughs> like, I mean, shit, if that's any way to get me to care about sports, it's to like get a dog involved. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> dude, imagine this dog is just smarter than this fucking guy who gets paid like hundreds of thousands of dollars to study sports tape and like his dog ends up beating him. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, oh, Uzi, yeah. you are a Braves fan. Is that true? Or are you just roasting us? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, I don't follow sports at all, but like every now and then I'll just check to see who's been doing well. And Vicky yeah. <laughs> is hilarious. Vicky is big into monster truck rallies. Let's go grave digger. Well, monster jam monster jam is going on in seattle this weekend oh yeah, I, yeah. I, dude i never went to one of those but they always seem like a really good time yeah i uh i mean shit if i was still drinking i'd probably love to <laughs> yeah. go to one of those things and just be like Woo! <laughs> but i still think it would be awesome just like i've i wouldn't even begin to know how it would feel to be watching those like huge hunks of metal flip around and just yeah. smash and shit <laughs> Uh, but yeah, man, that, thank you so much, Brad, for joining us on this live stream and sharing some of your beautiful art with us and my audience. Like, uh, we said at the beginning of this video, do follow Brad at the artistic Avenger. I have all his links down below. And if you are tagging, uh, if you are watching now or watching this on a replay, do me and Brad a favor and like this stream. It goes a long way. And leave your comments down below if you're also watching the replay over how we did. Uh, are our selections totally ass backwards and someone else would win? I would love to hear theoretical brackets from you guys. Let us know who you think would win. Um, and let us know who you want to see in next year's. Yeah, next year maybe we'll do like a, a fucking final girl bracket or like, I don't know, something along. Or we'll do like bit characters instead, like our uh, – lesser than horror icons facing off 
And then eventually maybe we'll get to a point where we'll have all the winners face off. Who knows? But and then Yoka, and then I'll have you over on uh, my channel if we can mm -hmm. go over all the the horror characters in the Marvel and DC universe. And have yeah, them dude, I would love to do that. Get me, give me a reason to actually look into some of these characters in comic form since that's your thing. Yep. <laughs> There you go. Next year, there. Next year awesome. is Cinema Rink's Revenge. <laughs> God, I needed that fucking movie. I don't give a fuck if it broke new ground or anything. That was the biggest waste of time ever. <sighs> Amateur film school garbage. <laughs> My hot take for this stream. But yes, thank you so much for watching alongside me and Brad. We love you guys, and thank you for tuning in, even if you're watching on a replay. And, yeah, um, do leave us a comment down below how we did, how we sounded. Maybe we were just made asses of ourselves, and we love you. Thank you so much for watching. Uzi, thank you so much. You are always such a big part of my live streams, and being able to comment down below with some useful, funny information is very helpful. So thank you again. Love you, brother. And, uh, yeah, Brad. Anything else you would like to plug before we sign off here? Nope. Just thank you to everyone who's watched and followed along. Thank you, Uzi, for sticking around and, you know, lending your thoughts and, and helping guide us <laughs> on some of the tougher decisions. Yes. Um, thank you for breaking the bracket. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I think you've said it all. Yeah. And, yeah. and thank you for sharing some fucking awesome doodles for us, Brad. 100% always there's, yeah there's one not final but so you guys know how long drawing takes it's you know you see the the time lapse and the speed drawings but draw nowhere it close to there all fucking day <laughs> <laughs> uh all right brad thank you so much always appreciate you brother i'm sure i will be talking to you within our fucking group chat of sorts or in some other way probably within the yeah. next 20 minutes. I'm sure we've missed a whole conversation about footwear or something in, in our <laughs> fucking group chat. But we love you guys. Take care. We will see you. See you guys. Love you. Bye.